Welcome to the first episode of On A Plate with Ryan and Pierre. I'm Ryan. And I'm Pierre. And the aim of this show is to provide you with good meals for a good price that you can make nice and quickly at home and hopefully use up some of those ingredients that you may be panicked for as part of lockdown. So we've had lots of suggestions. Good. Our video trailer has been up for just under a week. Yeah. And we've had lots in. Fenugreek, of course, came up. Yeah, of course. Chicken, steak, yeah. chickpeas, cayenne pepper, black sesame seeds, radishes, onion, rice. Some of them are a bit less creative than others. I had a look, good look through all of them, and I reckon chickpeas is probably a, a good starting point. Yeah. That's the kind of thing most people possibly have in the back of their cupboard. It was probably the only thing left on the shelves. So what are we going to do with chickpeas? Chickpeas. I reckon summer's coming. So we're going to do a nice fresh chickpea curry. Chickpea. We'll run some butternut squash through it. Yeah, vegetarian. Maybe, yeah, let's go vegetarian. Baby leaf spinach, some coconut milk. And then on the top, I think we'll do a nice sort of fresh garnish. So pomegranate seeds, desiccated coconut, some fresh garden herbs. And I think on the side, we can sort of push the envelope here. We'll do some uh, chickpea fritters. Yeah. For them, we can use all the sort of uh, backwater spices that you might not be using. And we'll do a chickpea salad, chickpea and mango salad. We can use those uh, black sesame seeds that someone mentioned. Yeah. Does that work? Yeah, I reckon I've got most of that written down. Good man. We could probably go shopping then. Let's go. We don't need spinach. We need to find the chickpea. Oh, that's good. Cool. Turmeric. Brown turmeric. Curry powder. Got that meal. So Ryan, this is quite a bumper crop. I'm quite impressed we've got all this right? for Tara. You've done well. Thank you. Cucumber. Carrot. Right. Uh, Garlic. Thank you. <laughs> Ginger, some nice uh, purple spring onions. We've got a red cabbage, that's a bit unusual. But I suppose similarly, people pick it up and go, oh, coleslaw, and then they can't be bothered. I mean, I've never heard of red spring onions, to be fair. Okay, well, we're, we're there. So we've got cabbage, we've got a nice mango, a few of these sort of backwater spices, a bit of uh, coconut, these are the black sesames, fennel seeds, ground coriander, uh, some nice fresh garden herbs, so we've got some curly leaf parsley, um, a little bit of oregano, some fennel, some chocolate mint. And you got those from the garden? Yeah, planted them before the lockdown and they're blossoming. Yeah, that was good planning. Cherry tomatoes, radish, some nice pomegranate, some lime, chilies, spinach, butternut squash, and obviously the chickpeas that we talked about. Chickpeas. And what we've done here is we've just uh, ground some up for the fritters. So how did you grind them? Just in a blender? Just in a food processor, whatever you got. You can even do it by, with a fork if you want. So we're going to be left with a chickpea curry. Chickpea fritters yeah. and a chickpea salad. And you're going to see it all come together. And not only see, you're going to do it. Nice. And I even had some space in the budget, so I snuck some naan breads in there. This is going to be vegan, vegan, vegetarian. Very popular. Right, okay, so we're going to start with the curry. Yeah. Nice and simple. We've got the ginger, garlic, chili, the assorted spices that yep. we're going to run through, the butternut squash, the chickpeas will go in at the end, because obviously we don't want them to fall apart to nothing, yep. and the coconut milk. We'll cook it out, and we'll add the spinach at the end. A few basics to point out before we start. Your chopping board, nice flat surface. Nice flat surface. Damp tea towel underneath to stop the uh, rotation of the board. Nice sharp knife. Remember, you don't need a machete. This has been with me for 15 years, and I, I use it for almost every job in the kitchen. You see people with long knives, big knives, Japanese knives. This is what you need. When you sharpen a knife, this is my favorite bit. Why do we sharpen a knife? Because the edge of the knife is like this, yeah? As we use it, it goes like that. The point of the sharpener is to get it back straight. I thought it just made you look cool as a chef. And, yeah, that, and that. Bear in mind, once it's past a certain point, it'll have to be on a stone. But nice sharp knife, so one stroke down, okay? And away from the chopping board. Because you think of those little metal filings that are coming off, why would you want them over the board? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Quick rinse. And that's to get the filings off the knife. Exactly. So we'll start with the chili. We're going to leave the seeds on. Goodness. Some people might cut the chili last because obviously you've got the seeds on the board, which will affect the taste of the board as well. So any product that you put on top of that is always going to have that faint chili taste. Do, you need, do we need this on? Not yet. Not yet. We're just going to put it all in the pan. Yeah. Uh, we've got our ginger. So I like to be quite rough with the ginger. I always feel like I'm wasting ginger when I well, use it. Well, no, because then you can use it to do your, your own natural herbal teas and things. A bit of honey, yeah. and it'll nurse your uh, lockdown hangover. Okay. So, so wh why, why grate as opposed to slice? It's just releasing the flavor, isn't it? These microplanes, they're pretty useful. A little bit of garlic. 
So we've got one chili, we've got half a knob of uh, ginger, yep. and I'm just going to do uh, one garlic, because I'm going to run some to the rest of the items as well. I like crushing garlic, and I've got my press. Well, but my girlfriend always has a go at me, because apparently it's really difficult to clean. Each, each to their own. So we can switch the, uh, the heater on. Yeah, this is the nice noisy part. Yeah, so press the power button, obviously. Yeah. And again, because you switched it off. Press select. And we're going to go maximum power quickly. Can't even power the hole. <laughs> There's your wooden spoon. Nice splash of olive oil in there. Yeah. And with these, we're just going to go freestyle. So, but this is... So this is your ground coriander. Yeah. Okay. We've got a little bit of the uh, turmeric, which is obviously the colour. And it is a subtle taste. But herbally, is that a word? Herbally? herbally? Sure. It is a really good sort of, uh, it's good for your immune system. So we've added a little bit more oil in the pan. Obviously when we put the dry spices on, don't be afraid to put a little bit more olive oil in there because it obviously will catch. Yeah. And what we're trying to do now is really bind all those spices to the, uh, the chili, the garlic and the ginger. We're not going to put the onion in just yet because the onion will release water and we don't want to dilute the taste. I, I, I don't like cutting uh, onions too much. Did you see the movie about Julia Child? No. And you got Meryl Steele and she's, she's cutting the onions like that? Well, good for her. <laughs> <laughs> so you literally just slice one way, slice the other. And that's quite, exactly. Like, quite a coarse chop. Yeah. Is it coarse chop? Is that good technical? Uh, just chop, chopped onion. Chopped onion. Yeah. I'm trying to make it too complicated, aren't we? Yeah. Remember, cooking's simple. You, know, you can do as many various techniques as you want it's all personal so we're going to turn up the heat a little bit a little bit more of all I need to wash my hands again. so now we're just what, softening the onion so now we're softening the onion the water is going to come out the onion we're going to cook it out and then when at that stage you'll be able to hear it it'll go from a and then the water will come out of the onion and it'll go like a little simmer. When it starts to tss again, that's when the butternut squash goes in. So let's just have those two noises again. So you've got a tss, yeah, right. yeah. And then a little simmer. Yeah. And then you can hear it now, tss, yeah. I mean, those two sounds sound exactly the same to me. Well, I trust you. yeah, trust me on this one. Okay, <laughs> so the water's coming out of the onion. You can see it quite clearly there. We're cooking it out. And at this stage, we're going to start thinking about adding our butternut squash. Right. So with this, I've diced the butternut squash up, okay? There's various uses that we can do for the seeds. What you can do as a garnish... Am I, am I ruining it? No, we're all right. No. Um, as a garnish, you can take the seeds out, give them a little wash in a, a colander, dry them out, and you can just um, toast them with a bit of soy sauce. So very quickly, if, 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 if you hadn't pre-cut this, how, how was the best way to, to dice the butternut squash? I've just taken the top off, I've taken the peeler to it, and then I've just cut into even sized chunks. The point of even sized chunks is? Even cooking. Right, yep. okay. I did some practice before we did yeah. this episode. With the base of it, it's a bit more difficult because obviously it's thin in some parts, thick in the other. So you can save that, use it for something else. The seeds, you can toast them off with a bit of soy sauce and just make a nice little garnish. In a frying pan. Exactly. Um, a little bit of butter and you can keep them on your shelf and use them as a little garnish, even for salads and bits and pieces. Okay, okay. so butternut squash. Is going in. Oh, so then we just try and coat this in the curry? Or? Yeah. So now, effectively, we want to start caramelizing the uh, butternut squash because obviously, as they say in the trade, no color, no flavor. I'm just going to add a few cardamom pods. We're using some good quality olive oil. Don't be afraid to add a little splash more if you feel that it's sticking at the bottom of the pan because what you can do, splash of olive oil, deglaze the pan a little bit, exactly like that, and then you're reintroducing the flavor. So with olive oil, I know it sounds like a bit of a stupid question, but there's olive oil extra virgin olive oil. Pumice oil, olive oil, extra virgin. And they're basically all different grades of quality. And obviously the flash points are quite important. Flash point meaning? As in the point of combustion in a pan. Right. You can get a lot higher temperature with a pumice oil or even better, a simple veg oil. Okay, so this is starting to soften a little bit. Yeah. What we don't want to do obviously is for it to fall apart. I always like my veg crunchy. For me personally, you know, the, the days of boiled veg, I, I, I like to have a bit of crunch. Texture. In texture, it. exactly that. And that's what we'll be achieving with the garnish for the curry. At this point here, we're going to be adding our coconut milk. So what's that, a, a whole can and all the liquid and everything? It's just where all it's separated in. in the can. Yes. Yeah. So Ryan, we're just going to let that cook off in the background whilst okay. we do a few other bits okay. and pieces. Suitably background. Perfect. Yes. Right, fritters. Yeah. Okay. We've got some flour. It can Ooh. be anything. 
whatever you've got in the cupboard. We can do plain flour self-raising, we could do gluten-free self-raising, we could do ground flour, anything. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, we're going to add our spices. Okay. So, we've so got again, we've got a little bit of the uh, ground coriander. Coriander, yeah. Again, a little bit of the curry, curry powder. powder. A little bit of turmeric. So that's our dry spice. A little bit of salt and pepper. We're going to get our two eggs. The eggs are in. Yeah. Now, if you can just whisk that up for me, please. Sounds like whiskey business. Mm. So here, I've just diluted a little bit of the uh, coconut milk that we use for the uh, curry with a little bit of water. Okay. Okay. And that's going to go in just to help your batter come along a little bit. Right. Keep going, bud. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, boss. Chef will do. Sorry, chef. Right. Okay. Is this good? Or am I well, we don't want any lumps. We don't, we, don't, we don't want oh, any lumps. Do I need to whisk a bit quicker? Yeah. Uh, I think there's something invented called an electric whisk. There is. That would make this a little bit less strenuous on my poor arms. Yeah, but look at you, bud. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't think we'd be getting the fat jokes in that early into the episode, <laughs> but okay. We can see that starting to come together now. Yes, yeah, And a bit like yogi batter. Yeah. It, it, it nearly spilled that all over the table. Fab. A bit like yogi batter, it doesn't need to be perfect, but as long as we don't see massive clumps of flour, that'd be ideal. Okay. So these are our um, chickpeas that we did put in the, I put the electric uh, so blender earlier. Really. Just one tin? That's one tin, 400 grams. Okay. And it's been through the blender, but you said you could do that with a fork. Exactly. Okay. Oh, so we're not coating the chickpeas, it's part, part of the batter. The chickpeas are part of the batter. Right, okay. 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 Quite it's hard work, huh? Yeah. My arms That's why I gave you a small whisk. Did, did you make it more difficult than it needed to be? I did. Thank you. <laughs> Try not to, like, pull a constipation face whilst I... <laughs> whilst I... <laughs> okay, that's perfect. Okay, was it perfect five minutes ago? Yeah. So what we're going to do, we're going to put that in the fridge to rest for half an hour. Okay. Or whatever time you've got, 15 minutes. Yeah. Whilst we do it, just... <laughs> and we're going to quickly do the salad and we'll come back to the fritters. Okay. Okay. All right, yeah. right. The salad. Okay. The red cabbage, I am going to cut last because it makes the board very red. Okay. Yes. As we know, and our fingers. So I want it to be one of my last jobs. So. In a bowl. Okay. How many is a few? Well, effectively 400 gram. Okay. If we're feeding four people. So one, another tin. Another tin. Yeah. Okay. And we're going to use our nice little cherry tomatoes, which we're just going to quarter. Steady, do I panic then? Finger gone. What are you drinking? Uh, a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. That's nice. That is nice. So, chickpeas, obviously, oh, very nice. I'll have mine uh, afterwards, thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, chickpeas, mangoes, cabbage, radishes, tomato, basically whatever we can get our hands on. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got the chickpeas already. In go our cherry tomatoes. In go our radishes. Do you eat much radish? No. Not at all? It's a vegetable, so I tend to stay quite far away from it. I'm with you. Mm. Nice bit of spring onion. You've left the tomato. Sorry, bud. Cut this on the diagonal. Why on the diagonal? Just looks nicer. Looks nicer. <laughs> <laughs> no, what you can do is you can soak it in a bit of ice water and it'll curl up nicely. Oh. Okay, same with the radish. Okay. Is there a great flavour difference in a red spring onion? Well, you, I'll let you decide that at the end. Okay. Okay. It's very insightful, thank you. Mango? You eat much <laughs> mango? Uh, no. No? Okay. So, top and tail it. Okay. And then we'll just let the knife do the work. That's a very chefy phrase, that is, isn't it? Let the knife do the work. Well, it is, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, we're not looking to... Mangoes are quite expensive, so we don't want too much wastage. But they are less than a tenner. Correct, as we demonstrated. Mm. Then we look for the stone. We oh. Cut a little bit off. Okay. Any way you want. Again, this is uh, home cooking. You can go as fancy or as non-fancy as you like. Me, personally, when I cook at home, if it's just me and uh, Mrs. Sauce. <laughs> yeah. Packet sauce. Okay. Microwave so, rice. That's our mango. 
we're going to put a little bit of a, uh, the uh, black sesame. Yeah. Okay. And already that looks pretty colourful, doesn't it? Looks pretty great. Does that need a toss? Not, not just yet. Not yet. Okay. Oh, it's getting Let, carried away. Okay. <laughs> do the red cabbage last. And what we're going to do now for all these dishes, we're just going to do a little bit of pickled uh, cucumber Ooh. and a little bit of uh, pickled carrot, just for a nice little bit of acidity. And again, talking about our textures. And... Okay. So we've made our pickling liquor. Have we? Yeah. Well, I have. Oh, you pre-prepared that element. Yeah. With, with what? So this is, this one here, is the classic three, two, one. Sorry. Water, vinegar, sugar. <laughs> this one here. Yeah. So this is one I made earlier. Yeah. Okay. So three Very parts. Blue pizza. Yeah. Three parts water. And in this one, I prefer it sweeter. So I, I've done two parts sugar and only one part vinegar. If you wanted to pickle something like a, a cabbage, for example, you do three water, two vinegar, and only one sugar. And you've done three sugar. Three water, two, two sugar, sugar, one, one vinegar. Water, vinegar. Yeah. We can see the wine's already going through. <laughs> okay. And again, you know, we don't need to be shy infusing a few flavors that we've got hanging around. Okay. So our cucumber goes in and same story with the carrot. There we go. So what's the benefit of pickling? Well, it's pickling flavor, isn't it? Because if we think about the, the flavors that already go on here, we've got quite sweet mango. Mm -hmm. The chickpeas sort of bring quite a, a, earthy. a new, earthy neutral flavor, mm -hmm. okay? The spring onions, a bit of, dare I say, acidic sharpness. Ooh, you dared say it. I did. But with this and the increased sugar, it's rounding the whole balance off. Mm -hmm. You see where I'm coming from? You'll sure. be able to taste it more than anything. I'm good but at tasting. We know that. So with the red cabbage, I'm going to take a little piece off here. I'm going to use the rest for another dish later on. Okay. I'm just going to slice it up. Look at that speedy slicing. Well, yeah. 15 years in the business. Chef slicing. So some people might say you can salt it, you, you know, leave it to, with a little bit of salt to uh, soften up a little bit. I'm not in this case. Okay. I, I want it quite crunchy, a bit like a coleslaw, so it's just going to go straight in. Delicious. So that's all our elements in the in the salad. So we've got chickpeas, tomatoes, radishes, yep. we got red our... spring onion, mango, and cabbage. Yeah. So a little bit of seasoning. Okay. Is it important how high you drop that salt from? No. no. Especially not if you're a uh, matey boy. What's his name? Salt bay. Exactly that. Okay. So we're just going to let those flavours, the salt and pepper, dry out a little bit of the taste. And we're going to do our fritters. Oh, that sounds like something I've got to do. Exactly. So when I say we, I mean me, you. So pan on, switch it on. Let's start at a thousand. Oh. OK, a little bit of oil. A little bit of salt. Salt in the pan. Yeah. Bear in mind, these are fritters. So if you put the salt in now, it's sort of going to dissipate. Okay. What we'd rather do is have a bit of uh, salt in the pan straight away. And what I want you to do for each one, an, a nice sort of tablespoon each, and you can get one and one. Is that so right? two? Yeah. Cool. Is it hot enough? Yes. You can go in now, cold. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't look very big. Go on. Put another little bit in. So one, same. one and a half on each one, and then sort of form a little moon shape. Starting from the middle, just push it out. That's it. Great. And I just do one next to it. This is, this is, I mean, this is Master Chef at its very finest. Whoop, boop, boop, boop. Right, yeah. Just as he said, Master Chef at its finest. <laughs> Look at him go, yeah. down himself. <laughs> I'll get an apron next time. I think an apron would have been a nice addition. Okay, that's or great. they're going to become one. <laughs> okay. So we're going to lightly season the back again. Okay. And what we're looking for is a nice bit of colour <laughs> and we'll, we'll know that it's cooked properly when we start to see little bubbles on the top, on the top from this side. So, it's like, like so that's when we'll flip it. Exactly. So at this stage we've got to uh, start thinking about how we're going to dress all these elements. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to think about cutting some herbs now. Okay. Okay. So we've got a little bit of parsley, a little bit of our nice bronze fennel. The mint, I always prefer to tear it. Do you tear mint with your mojitos? I do, with the mojitos I do, yeah. yeah so we'll probably tear the leaves on that one. And then we've got a little bit of the um, oregano it, here. 
is there a big benefit to using fresh herbs over sort of dried um, yeah I mean covered stuff fresh herbs do you, do you grow fresh herbs at home I have some yeah. yes so I mean it, it's a taste difference isn't it I mean you can buy curly leaf parsley at the shop for what one pound twenty yeah and then you can plant it in your garden and in this weather it'll keep you going over the summer yeah. you've just got to water it so these look like they're bubbling yeah so we can see the bubbles on this side here we can see a bit of color so what we want to do is flip them over so oh, at this oh. stage we'll switch it off so you don't uh, completely cover myself in chickpea batter yeah and always bear in mind if you're using a non-stick pan be careful not to scrape it with your uh, your steel utensils i don't think i did I'm doing that as well. Be careful not to splash hot oil towards yourself. Always flip away. All right. I'll see ya. Okay. So this way we only splash the camera then instead of us. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> right. Look at that. Look at that. So I reckon with the colour there that we've got and the residual heat that's in the pan, we can just leave that now and I'll be perfectly cooked. With the pan off. With the pan off, we can leave them there and they'll be fine. Lovely. Okay. So we. We're going to chop our herbs, okay, and then we can start thinking about dressing. Yeah. What we need to do is finish the curry. We do. Yeah. Okay. So we can take those off, and if you go and grab the curry, curry that's been uh, on the hob. Yeah. So we're going to bring this to a nice temperature where we can wilt the uh, the spinach and the rest of our ingredients, but we can get our chickpeas in. Chickpeas. Being in. a chickpea. Ooh. Yeah. Being a chickpea, uh, chickpea curry. Lovely. And this is our nice, uh, nicely washed baby leaf spinach. Okay. And with the spinach, it's very much, I mean, I know you're not a big veggie, but <laughs> it's the taste. So what will be important is to taste this now, see how you're happy with the seasoning, because obviously throughout the cooking process, the waters have come out, the butternut squash, they might have diluted your initial seasoning. So just keep checking all the way through. And bear in mind, obviously, when we add the spinach, that's going to dilute your taste even further because the water that's coming out of that. So you should taste it as it... Uh, Keep tasting throughout. Throughout. They don't, you know, they say season throughout the layers of cooking. So for each process that you do, keep keep testing. Okay? So, add your spinach. Add my spinach. All of it. Well, add a, add a handful at a time. I mean, most of that didn't even go in the pan. Yeah. I think you can put all of it in by the time it's wilted down. Fab. Little stir. How's that smelling? Delicious. Is it? It does smell good, yeah. Yeah? Do you think that'll go well with your wine that you've chosen? Well, I think th this wine's quite tropical, quite uh, quite acidic. Right. So, so I feel like the mango, I'm presuming that lime's going in this at some point. It is. So I think, I think it should go really well. I mean, New Zealand Sauvignon's quite popular wine anyway. It's a good it's a good kind of all rounder. But I think with curries and things it can go down quite 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 well. I'd agree with that. God, that smells so good. So again with the serving, the spinach is nice and green. We don't want to cook it out till it's wilted brown. Mm -hmm. So the key with the spinach will be to put it in literally two minutes before you're gonna serve. Yeah. Um, so now we taste? Absolutely. You've Sorry, got your spoon? I'm just desperate, absolutely desperate to taste. Taste all of it or just the sauce or? I taste the sauce. Obviously you need to be comfortable that you've uh, cooked the butternut squash, but because I'm here, we know that we have. A bit more salt and pepper, I think. Not that I know. I just said that so it sounded like I knew what I was talking about. <laughs> and it gave me the opportunity to do my salt thing. Oh. Which I feel like... You fucked is... it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. It's good, it's much more, I mean, it's much more colourful than when you, when you get a sort of jar, jar curry sauce yeah. and just chuck your chicken in and... Well, it's fresh, isn't sort it? Sort of good. So, yeah. And this is, you know, it's com completely malleable. You, you, you can add anything to it. But at least the basis is there with your... Uh, so you could follow this exact same recipe, but put chicken in instead of... You could improvise. Kind of squash yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So, Ryan, uh, you're going to dish up the curry. Okay. So, nice uh, generous portion there. And obviously a little bit of the sauce so we can soak it up with the naan bread and the rice. 
about that. Yeah, fab. Okay, and as we mentioned, nice little uh, summery garnish. Okay, so we've got a nice pomegranate seeds. We've got our coconut. I'll do the important bit that you chefs always forget about. Clean the plates. Okay, we're going to do a little bit of uh, this torn mint. Little fresh herb and a little bit of this fresh spring onion. Okay. Look at that. So we've got that, the rice, the naan. Yeah. Where's your salad? Salad. And then if you can grab me a, a fresh plate for my uh, fritters, please. Of course. My hands quickly. I'm a hands So these are our uh, pickling elements. Okay. So we've got a nice bit of carrot, and that's our cucumber. And again, our herbs. Okay. And then finally the fritters. A little bit of cottage cheese or you could put creme fraiche or, or whatever. Whatever works for uh, you and your family. Again with the herbs. Spring onion. Maybe a trickle of uh, Olive oil, little zigzag of olive oil on top of that one. Cool, eh? Like a pro, look at that, one lesson in. And just to help it along, just gonna add a bit more of this. And maybe a few of these pomegranate seeds. And there we go. There you go. Top that off, nice glass of New Zealand Sauvignon. Lovely. This is my favorite, it's Mayfly New Zealand Sauvignon. Yeah. This is, uh, we get this from Venatopia in Tetbury. Yeah. Um, but it's very reasonable price. Nice tropical and citrus flavour. Goes perfectly with a nice family curry. Perfect. Good job. So Ryan, you've invited us out to the uh, lovely Teatro Courtyard Garden to enjoy our, our meal together. I mean, it's a lovely day. We've been blessed with good weather. We're, so, we're socially distanced accordingly. I think, well, I mean, I think we're excessively socially distanced, <laughs> yeah, but sorry? there is no <laughs> such thing. Um, we're socially distanced. Perfect, yeah. perfect. And I think we've done a good job of splitting this meal for four people between the two of us. Um, so let's... let's are, are we going to dig in? Tuck in, okay. I think, yeah. That's tasty. It's all right. It's really nice. I see what you mean about not having the butternut squash too um, uh, soggy. And the fritters are good. Those are the things I'm most interested in because they're a bit unusual. I, I mean, I think they're pancakes, but... Yeah. This is the Mayfly Sauvignon. And that's a good pairing wine. Thank you. I mean, I do try. It's a really nice wine. I mean, it's, it's 12 quid a bottle. Well, from Venetopia, which is pretty reasonable. I think you've always got to spend more on a white, a good white, than you need to on a good red. Yeah, and I think, so, I, think I mean, as New Zealand Samuels go, it's probably not the most expensive. It's a nice youthful wine, it's, it's tasty. It's delicious. Mm. I mean, I think between us, I probably contributed the least, but the wine is one of the most important elements of dinner. It's, it's a major delicious. contribution. So you can taste the chickpeas in the curry. They're still quite nice and firm. The butternut squash, that's cooked, but it's still, you know, it's not mush. And then obviously the fresh herbs. Is it is it too spicy? One chili is enough, isn't it? I think it's about right. Obviously, when you add the spinach, that'll soak up a lot of the spice. So if you wanted to go too chili, that would work, wouldn't it? I think what's quite nice is there's so many different textures through it. Yes. In that you know your, your curry is quite soft and quite quite sort of edible. Um, <laughs> you know, but the salad's quite crisp. And these honestly, these chickpea fritters are so tasty. I think I could eat quite a few of these. <laughs> and the pickle veg. How do you find them? It's nice. It, it, it sort of contrasts really nicely with the... I mean, the curry is quite spicy. You've got a bit of spice. The, the salad's quite sweet, so yeah. then having that pickled sort of element on top kind of brings it all together quite nicely. I think what's, what's quite nice about it is because 
the chickpeas in the curry are kind of slowly cooked through and the chickpeas in the salad are perhaps a little bit more firm it gives a nice bit of texture and you're almost getting different ways of in, of kind of enjoying the chickpeas yeah. but all in the same dish we've brought various elements through of uh, cooking techniques and as you say the the difference of textures and chickpeas has married quite well as a whole dish as a family meal i think it's spot on mm. so i think this has been a success agreed i think you're quite capable of cooking <laughs> thank you and i'm quite capable of pouring wine moderately i think we might have to do another episode of this excellent <laughs> We're doing all of this as part of Behind the Barn Door um, for the Barn Theatre. The Barn Theatre is a local charity uh, based in Sirencester who, as many, are working hard to raise vital funds to keep themselves going throughout this time. Uh, Pierre and I, as employees of Teatro, aren't working at the moment, uh, but we wanted to give what we can in terms of some valuable information for you, some more interesting things for you to cook whilst you're at home, and a way of supporting the Barn Theatre. If you'd like to donate, there's plenty of links on the Barn Theatre's page as to how you can donate to their cause and how you can support the theatre through this time so that they can carry on creating brilliant productions in Sirencester as we go forward. If you like this video, don't forget, we are doing another uh, episode next week. List all your ingredients, all your suggestions on the, uh, on the link or email, and uh, Ryan and I will do our best to uh, create some uh, fun new recipes for you to try at home. So until next week, from Ryan and Pierre, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>